Hello, welcome. I'm Vijay Prashad with Leftward Books, and I'm so deeply honored and pleased to have one of our authors, very prolific author for Leftward Books, Thomas Isaac, who is the for, uh, the finance minister of Kerala. Also, of course, has written for us two previous books. One, my favorite, on popular planning, excellent book, and then one of our very special books on cooperatives and well possible communism and now challenges to Indian fiscal federalism a book just out from us a title that we very much hope that you'll read welcome to leftward uh, nice to have you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you face as a communist finance minister in a state in the Indian Union well the book was prompted by the uh, compulsions of practice. Okay. And now as finance minister, the last left government also. And within this short period, things have changed so much. I suddenly realized I do not have the fiscal space I was used to, say five years back. Mm. Um, and this had to be addressed. Um, so I joined with uh, uh, other ministerial colleagues of Keshin came when the Finance Commission, the Finance Commission uh, began to take evidence. Uh, suddenly it was so evident that the central government was trying to use this Finance Commission uh, to further uh, limit the fiscal space of the states. So Around six, seven finance ministers in India came together. Uh, we wrote a scathing attack on the terms of reference of the Finance Commission. Uh, went to the president saying that the terms of reference must be changed. And I think we were successful in forcing certain introspection by the Finance Commission itself. Uh, now to take the fight forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought it is important that we put down on paper in a substantial way issues that we were raising and uh, um, that was the contest in which this book was written. So that's the context of federalism and the fiscal space afforded by the central government to states constitutionally right. mandated and so on. Just to expand this a little bit has there been any kind of narrowing of fiscal options for Kerala specifically since it's the last left government in <laughs> India? I mean, has there been any pressure from banks in terms of, you know, lending money to the state for projects? Has there been any other non-federal pressure on the state? Oh, very much. I don't think it would have been possible to undertake the Kerala experiment today, <laughs> which we have been, a legacy we have been carrying forward for the last, uh, say, let's put it, 100 years. It's a legacy driven by the movements from below, forcing the governments, royal governments and the successive uh, uh, popular governments which came to adopt a policy of redistribution. Now, policy of redistribution is not really redistribution of income and assets, but very importantly, social provisioning of uh, basic needs, education, health, mm -hmm. social security, and so on. Now, once you choose this path, you need to spend, uh, you need to spend a considerable amount of uh, your resources for this purpose, which in um, accounting system is known as revenue expenditure. Mm -hmm. So we have chosen a path of development where the focus is on revenue expenditure, uh, on expenditure on human resources, and we have benefited from that. One, we have uh, been successful in providing a decent life to ordinary citizens, mm. which is denied to most of Indians today. Um, 
But today, there are fiscal responsibility and budget management acts which say your revenue expenditure cannot be more than your revenue income. Revenue deficit must be zero. Now, if you are going to spend all your money on building uh, a big national highway or on um, a big dam, well, there is no recurring expenditure. There is no revenue expenditure. You build, is done. But you build a college. You have to continuously pay for your staff. Mm. So you have, you have historically chosen that path. Suddenly you find you are a state with big revenue deficit, which the law prohibits. But what can you do? Is, is there an accounting system? I can argue. I consider expenditure in uh, education as a capital expenditure. It's an investment in human capital. But the accounting system does not accept that explanation. So they are forcing me, forcing me to curtail my expenditure on public education, public health, and so on. So you see, that option of a left government, which I enjoyed, say the Kerala enjoyed, in the past is being closed today. Um, so that's one mm. rule. But now we have come to a particular stage of development where it is not enough to have uh, better human resources, that, uh, but you have to produce quality jobs for the better human resources in Kerala. Now if we fail to do that, then the right is going to say, hey, you guys, uh, you cannot do this. You have done your historical duty of redistribution. Now make way for development. We want jobs. So I want to say, no, we have an agenda. Okay, you want to develop, say, infrastructure. You want to have, um, uh, say, investment in sectors which are more uh, appropriate for the human resource in Kerala. We'll do it. But I don't. There is no money in the budget, sufficient money in the budget because you are spending more on revenue expenditure in the public health care and education. So you have to borrow money to do this. You are not borrowing money for spending your salary, but there is a ceiling. You can't spend more than, borrow more than 3% of your GSTP. But that's say some 20,000 crores or rupees. If we want to modernize our roads, say in a respectable period of five years, you need 50,000 crores of rupees. How long are you going to wait? Uh, you want to have, not bullet table or that, but we want to have an arterial, uh, high, uh, medium speed train mm. to Kerala to take away the traffic from the road. Very good idea. Now, 50,000 yeah. crores. Um, so, so you can't do that. That's a rule. You can't do that. So they tell you, no, 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 you can't do that. We let you go around, work our way around. So uh, are they, I mean, this is, this begs the question of are there workarounds for the state? Um, yes, we are trying to walk around, get around, say, therefore we say, all right, government can build all this, but let's set up a public sector a unit whose job is to borrow and build this. So then what is the credit worthiness of this public sector you need to borrow? So you legislate, say, well, the government shall every year give a proportion of its tax to this. So this uh, public sector unit can tell a big money market, well, look here, here is my future income flow from government guided by legislation. I'm going to get half my the motor vehicles tax year after year. So in a period of 20 years, I'm going to get uh, uh, one lakh crores of money from the center from the state. That's a very clever and, idea. And, and therefore give me money, I'll pay you back. I'll securitize uh, my future income flow. Exactly. That's what our public sector unit comes. So this is one way of getting around. Okay. So a fiscal uh, policy is also not confirming, you mm. want to have a left alternative, how to get around uh, these rule books and try to build people's alternative. Kerala is not willing to give up its path of redistribution and public provisioning of uh, social goods. 
at the same time we want to create quality jobs within kerala transform our infrastructure can i just ask you a question yeah. about that because i mean the idea of quality jobs is of course comes out of everybody's mouth mm. but it looks in this global economic situation that more and more people are going to suffer through precarious employment than have quality jobs i mean the ilo for instance has a program called decent work <laughs> and it's been trying to get governments to provide decent work rather than precarious work so how is the state of kerala which is after all a state in the indian union which has its own path of development as a you know federated structure how is kerala going to break from what is really a log global log jam on the question of jobs that's a very tough challenge and that's the reason we are underlying the importance of public sector mm. we have a big public sector which has not been functioning efficiently i must admit but one major game achievement of the last left government was we made all this public sector industrial public sector units working of to work on profit providing decent mm. job we want to repeat it again and we want to tell the private sector look here we are welcome here we will provide you whatever infrastructure you require you want port connectivity you want internet connectivity you want skill training in particular manner we give you but you have to provide decent job <laughs> now there are certain things non negotiable in kerala you can treat environment the way you like uh, you have to respect labor rights within that you are welcome we want you if our public sector can function profitably why can't you and that is the significance of making the public sector work efficiently and profitably so and that becomes part of the left alternative now fiscal federalism the central government is selling off all the public assets and here state government is trying to preserve them and uh, therefore they consider all the waste um, and therefore they put various pressures on you for example now we have one airport in kerala run by uh, a government led company it's a private public partnership but government appoints a chairman and mp is the most profitable venture in kerala so we have started another airport in the same manner so in this context now central government is selling off a true under way for capital city airport we tell them give it to us we'll run it they said no no we won't give you <laughs> we want uh, our model is business model is different uh, so we said give us a first option of buy we'll buy from you mm. so no no you have to compete in the market and buy okay we, we are forming a company to uh, tender for the airport and take it over um, i'm confident we can run it if we can run kochi airport profitably why not to one from airport but you know you are challenging the, the fiscal parameters mm. set by uh, the central government in this in a sense so this is one part they have made certain rules how you can behave and function you know, that's a limit to new challenge to federal autonomy two they are using constitutional institutions like uh, say uh, finance commission to impose conditionalities on the state government to deny uh, the right to share of the devolution and so forth um, like that say the administrative legal and so constraints increasingly on the state government um, all the state governments may not share our concern hmm? but nevertheless we are making the issue the question of federalism as a central issue in the political debate today uh, we are succeeding 
the sense. This book, its importance is, this is going to be subject of a major seminar where we are going to invite all finance ministers of India to come and discuss. Mm. Uh, many, at least a dozen of them have agreed. Uh, hopefully, before the election itself, towards the end of February, we will have such a major get-together in Delhi, where majority of the finance ministers will come and they will have to uh, respond to the issues that we raise. Uh, that's one level. Mm. Other level, we'll concentrate on the universities. In Kerala, start with Kerala. Uh, in Kerala, in three centers, I am going to give, uh, and perhaps the other authors also, uh, together, uh, six lectures on fiscal federalism, two days, intensive. All students who are interested can, can come. If it proves to be interesting, maybe after the elections, uh, we'll take a tour around the Indian uh, campuses, uh, raising the issue. Maybe the political contest in India would have changed by then. Maybe we'll use that political contest to push uh, a little more, uh, create a little more space for the states in India. That's amazing. Uh, if you are uh, going to spend some time in the next few months, read this book. If you are lucky enough to come for one of these seminars, you must make the attempt. But more than anything, keep an eye out on the expanding of the question of the fiscal space. This, this is not a subject only for economists. This is a subject for all human beings. You can't do things if you can't finance them. So read the book, go to the seminar, and have this discussion and debate with your friends. Thanks a lot.